It's time for the Wrestling Observer Extra. The moment you've all been waiting for. The undisputed, most diabolical villain in the world. With Dave Meltzer, right here on The Law. Live audio wrestling. You know, the tee up to tight about trivia is go one-on-one and get it done. But I think for the very first time tonight, I'm going to go one-on-one with Meltzer. Not going to face off with him because I would lose. Um, but no, we're just going to chat with Dave. But after that, it will be title bout trivia time. So if you do want to call in and play a very Dr. Seuss um, and wrestling edition of title bout trivia, then give us a call at 1 855 591 6876. The t shirt from Barbershop Window up for grabs for you in the very next segment. But joining me right now, as I said, the editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, fresh back from seeing UFC 214 live. Dave Meltzer. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, good. We're going to get into a little bit of UFC. But uh, we just had a caller on that was asking about the WWE quarterly report. Mm-hmm. And with the emphasis that has been put on Jinder Mahal, this caller was asking if there has been any impact in the report via the push towards India. I couldn't see anything about India in the report. I haven't studied it as close because I went away for the thing right when the the thing came out. But... I mean, the, I I didn't notice, and they certainly didn't state anything. And the um, you know the WWE Network number was was a disappointment. Actually, it actually fell um, from the last quarter. Slide, you know, it, it was essentially the same as last quarter. But this was supposed to be the big growth quarter because the WrestleMania quarter, mm-hmm. and also because with WrestleMania free, the idea is that you pick up a month after WrestleMania, and that you know, so so um, yeah. It, it, that wasn't so strong, but I mean, overall, their business is, is healthy, and they're they're making cutbacks, so their profit margin gets a little bit higher. They're doing a lot of cutbacks right now. It's one of the reasons you don't see the pyro, and you know they're canceling a lot of or, or they're they're um, lowering the budget on the WWE Network programming, so that the network, now that it's not growing as much, you know, can can maintain the profit level and increase the profit level. It really seems to me like the WWE is trying to serve two masters here. One of them being themselves and the WWE Network. And the other one, of course, is these television ratings. And we've seen this especially uh, in the past few weeks. And the examples I brought up at the beginning of the show is Chris Jericho coming back and surprising everyone on SmackDown. And this week, pushing towards the main event of Nakamura and Cena. Here's a match that is completely fresh but it's not being done on a pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, I was surprised because I thought that that you know, should be a pay-per-view match. Because one of the things about it, unless they retrain the fans, is the, the mentality is when you watch a Raw match or a SmackDown match, it's like you watch it and the next day you forget it. But the pay-per-view match you're supposed to remember for, you know, especially a big one for months to come. Like the Punjabi prison. Well, <laughs> we remember well, I mean, it for we all, all the wrong we all, reasons. We'll, we'll remember that one at the end of the year, unfortunately. But yep. yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, so I found that uh, very strange, though. I mean, what is the mentality? Just to, to get a rating going? Or are you thinking that we're going to get, you know, basically a schmage finish here on on Tuesday, and we'll see these guys later on? I don't know, because the winner's getting a match with um, Jinder Mahal, so I think that we're going to get a winner. I, I think the other guy's going to be... Perhaps wrestling AJ, um, you know, because I think AJ, because AJ and Kevin Owens are probably wrestling tomorrow, right? And I think that that's they've wrestled so many times. It's kind of like, you know, it's 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 ready. It's ready to be to move on. So I think that like the loser of that match could be the one who faces AJ, because obviously they teased uh, Cena and Nakamura against AJ in, right. in recent weeks on TV. And then is it? The Owens and Shane match that was pushed very hard on television this week, does that look like a SummerSlam match? That's the time of the year. If they're going to yeah. do it, I would think it'd be either SummerSlam, because it's, it's a little early to be starting a push for WrestleMania. Yeah, I figured so. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, you know, it looks like a possibility. Chris Jericho was a pleasant surprise for me this week on television. Is he back, or was that just a one-off because uh, schedules happen to intertwine? I don't know the answer to that. He's not advertised on any shows going forward. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think he probably wants it that way. So, um, I mean, I know that he's back in October touring. And he, he was actually touring. He actually did a concert in New York this week. But, um, you know, it's not like they're, they're not touring right now. So he does have some time. So I, I don't know. He, I got the impression from the interview that, you know, because it was a big surprise, mm-hmm. from the interview that um, – 
you know, he acted like he was back, not that he was, oh, yeah, I'm here for one night just to, you know, so. So I don't know. But they did beat him the first night in, too, so that kind of makes me think that, that he wasn't that strong in their plans for right now, at least. Another uh, someone that we saw pop up last week in the Punjabi prison match was, of course, uh, Great Kali. And then I was shocked to see him not even appear on SmackDown. Is there no storyline going forward between him and Randy Orton? Um, I don't think so. It was just that's... a one-off? You know, I mean, I guess you could do a TV match, but I don't really want to see... Um, I think that you know, Randy Orton's had enough problems this year with, with bad booking to go in there and follow with a feud with a great colleague. That would be pretty scary for him. Yeah, he's he's had a couple disasters. I just figured if you're going to put this guy on TV, then there's there's an RKO to happen, you know. And we just he just disappeared. He didn't even appear this week, which I was kind of surprised at. And they didn't really talk about him too much either. I mean, it was mentioned as part of the story of the show, but they didn't go, "Oh my God, the great Kali's back." It was just kind of like, yeah, it just I got the impression it may have been just a way to get out of that match. Surprise! I really thought you'd see Great Kali standing behind Jinder, the Singh brothers there at his side, and you're creating this a bit of a faction here, you know, just like Jinder's crew. But there didn't seem to be any of that this week. Just Jinder being outshone by John Cena in the promo war. Um, no, a lot of guys get that. <laughs> that's true. Uh, o- uh, Owens and AJ. Uh, let's talk about the finish that happened last week. So more details came out because clearly. Something went awry in the match. Uh, it was not what we expected from those two guys who are always, you know, we always say they're going to put on a great match. It was very weird at the end. What happened with this finish and with this match last week at Battleground? That's really an interesting question. Um, I've heard two versions of the story. I mean, one is that that um, that wasn't supposed to be the finish. and for, But I, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I watch it over and over. And I have to go with the idea, to believe that, I have to go with the idea that AJ n- not just laps for a second, but laps completely. And, you know, I, I've, I've never seen him do that before. Or the other one is just that they changed the finish mid-match, which is almost unheard of. It has happened, but it's really almost unheard of. So, um, I mean, it's one of the two. It just seemed very, especially with those two guys in there, there's such pros to have that happen. And I was, I remember watching it and just... Looking at the ref and the ref bump and him just being there dazed, waiting for something to happen, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, was, uh, it was weird, whatever it was. It was weird. UFC 214, uh, Dave, you were there. Um, this definitely was a big event, and to combine the worlds of wrestling and MMA, of course, Brock Lesnar became was not on the card but became the big topic of discussion afterwards. Your gut feeling. Do you see this fight happening? I do think it's going to happen because both guys want it really bad, and there's a lot of money at stake to do it. Uh, whoever came up with the idea, that was a really smart idea. And, um, but I don't see it happening until next summer. Um, well, because well, Lesnar's under contract till just after, either WrestleMania or just after. Yeah. And... And and would you see, I mean, because I wouldn't necessarily see Vince McMahon letting him do what he did with Mark Hunt, because that's considered a failed experiment, correct? Um, it didn't hurt Lesnar. I mean, it, it, it was, you know, they, they had the bad pub from the drug test, mm-hmm. which WWE just ignored, but, um, which, was, but they, which they had to because of the contract with them. But the, um, the uh, you know, as, as far as... Um, you know, I, I mean, he's not going to just for for schedule reasons and timing reasons and, and and his drug test suspension reasons. He's not going to be able to wrestle until after WrestleMania anyway. So you, you're talking about WrestleMania and a two month camp before a fight. So, you know, really the earliest is June, and more likely, if you're going to be do June, you know, you, you're probably doing on the July, you know, the July Fourth weekend show in Vegas because that's one of the big shows of the year. It wasn't this year, but it usually is. Right. So. I would think if it's going to happen, that's probably the timing. It would be right around there. Well, if that's the case, then John Jones should be having a fight in between. And who do you see him lined up with next? I would go with Gustafson. Um, it's risky, right? I mean, yeah, I guess it doesn't nope. affect the Lesnar fight because you can do it regardless. You can do it regardless, yeah. but it does it does affect it slightly. Um, you know, it would be better if John Jones was the champion and John Jones was the you know the best light heavyweight in the world. And I'm wondering, because there's so much money in that fight, 
that maybe and, and and they can't do it until next summer. That maybe John Jones takes a year off because he, he made a lot of money on uh, on his fight last night. Yeah, he's taking a couple of years off. Uh, that's what he does, right? He just takes yeah, a year but, off. But and... Maybe maybe a year off isn't a good idea for him at this stage, especially at thirty. And um, yeah, so if he's going to fight, like say in December, um, I think Gustafson's the guy. Right. But uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a risk. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think John Jones taking time off is a risk as well. He tends to get up to some extracurricular activities, as we've seen. Yeah, that's another thing too. Well, we're going to see. I mean, John says he's a new John Jones, and you know, time will tell if if this was just a new scripted script, scripted storyline, which will backfire, or if it's the real deal, and uh, you know, he's going to be a new John Jones. GSP and Bisbing was off uh, after that horrendous fight with Woodley and Maya. It seems to be back on now. Uh, do you see it actually taking place, or are we? Yeah, gonna... I think that one's. That, they're looking at November fourth in Madison yes. Square Garden for that. And you see that happening? I think it's probably going to happen. Yeah, I mean GSP really wants it. Bisping really wants it. The only thing would be an injury, you know, to one or the other. And Bisping's knee isn't the greatest, uh, but you would figure November's a long time off. So, uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, flipping back over to the world of professional wrestling, let's talk some GFW. Uh, So here's just the end of a quote by Ed Nordholm this week. We made our best effort. It didn't happen, and I'm not going to negotiate all over again in regards to the Hardy situation. Do you feel it's just posturing, or uh, are these two going to take some time apart? Yeah, I mean, everything that everyone's saying is that the negotiations are dead, that both feel like... uh, there was a double cross on the last set of negotiations when the Hardys thought they had an agreement and they were just waiting for the papers to be signed. And then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of interviews from the GFW people who say that, oh, yeah, there's no deal. So there was a, that was a, a bad situation, it got, and it got worse this week. So um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I, right now, it feels like that gimmick is, is dead, which is a shame. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like one of the best-created gimmicks in a long time. And it's just, you know, because Impact isn't, you know, they can't do put it on anyone else. It'll just flop miserably if they do. And the Hardys can't use it, so it's kind of like it's disappeared. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Like, somebody has this really great gimmick that, that, that got over, and then it just disappeared. Or dare we say it's been deleted. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, Moose has re signed with uh, Global Force Wrestling for three years. This surprised me. Uh, is there, does, I'm, I'm guessing he just believes there's no interest outside? I, I'm just so shocked that he'd sign on for that long with this company when at one time there was interest from WWE for Moose. Yeah. Um, he, he must like it there or feel that even though there's interest, you know, they didn't, they, you know, they, they still have never made a deal for him. Which is interesting because you know he is you know he is the kind of guy they like you know yeah. football player who's six foot five and 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 you know can do really good athletic stuff in the ring. Yeah, it's very surprising why they wouldn't. Um, all right, so that that's great for this week, Dave. Really appreciate it. Uh, what's coming up in the Observer? Um, G one coverage, mm-hmm. uh, UFC coverage, and uh, you know what's going to happen in the next couple of days with the uh, the SummerSlam build and and the TV TVs from WWE and. Uh, I don't know what else is going to happen. I mean, but uh, something always does. So, yeah. Do you think uh, Omega's going to beat Okada in the G1, and that's going to lead to their rematch? Well, in theory, if he beats him, it leads to a rematch. But I think that four in a year is, is like a lot. Is, is, is pushing it. But I do think that um, I do think Omega wins the match on the 12th. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so. There you go. All right. Well, we look forward to all that coverage and chatting with you next week at this very same time. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Have a great week. You too. WrestlingObserver.com is where you can find all of Dave's work.